Yeah, I was thinking that could be repurposed, so you can like put it together in other ways. Yeah. I don't know. That's why I didn't put it together. I think it works with that way. Um, let's grab a few more like plants. This kind of stuff. Does this work? Clamps would be good. So right now we're really just taking a stock of all of the materials that we've collected so far, sorting out the pieces that we know we want to have in the workshop, thinking about what these things might trigger in terms of inspired ideas. Like, yeah, like anything that's a wearable, right. embedded thing, so maybe we can get a battery pack. Some artifacts here we bought, but we also try to repurpose things from thrift stores or found objects. The extrapolation factory was an experiment that we started to see how we can make speculative design more accessible. Our practice uses design as a way to envision our own versions of the future. It might be helpful to consider speculative design and future studies as two spaces that sometimes collide but don't necessarily um, work in the same way. And so future studies is, is built around this notion that we can start to imagine possible hypotheticals or versions of the future and think about how to avoid the ones that we don't want to get to and at the same time work toward the versions of the future that we would rather live in. Speculative design being a more amorphous and sometimes artistic space. where we see practitioners start to navigate through design challenges in ways that don't map to standard design practices. Really the first project that we wanted to do was 99 Cent Futures. The challenge in the 99 cent store project was to distill ideas for a possible version of the future into a product of some sort that you might find in a dollar store in the future. We wanted to bring speculative design outside of the academic space and a gallery setting into an authentic space that was the 99 cent store in downtown Brooklyn. And that's the first time that we actually created this step-by-step -step process that would allow you to come up with a story and then also with an idea for an artifact and then prototype it. The workshop that we're doing on Saturday is called Testing Hypotheticals. For us, this is a really interesting opportunity to think about how we can connect with the local community to imagine these hypothetical ways that our worlds could operate. The premise is to work with the participants' ideas and build out a test city. We will guide them to develop these ideas into products that could allow us to live in this world. Wonderful. Thank you guys all so much for coming. It's really great to be here. Great to have you here. We're going to be working with you guys to come up with these experimental, radical ways that your neighborhood could work differently than it does today. That's the mission of our project today. So this will be a two-step process. So today we'll do a design workshop where we'll um, come up with lots and lots of ideas and then narrow it down, be become more concrete, build out um, a start of a prototype next week, we'll um, have a build-out set, so to say, of the scenario that you've been envisioning. We've picked out a handful of examples of hypothetical test sites, places around the world, around the nation, where people are trying new ways of living, new ways of interacting with the world, with the environment. We're going to ask you to come up as a group and check out the test site examples. We're going to give you a set of note cards 
And on the note cards, you're going to write things that you think about when you think about Queens today. So these could be things that you love, things that you kind of don't like about Queens. What makes your neighborhood rich, vibrant, your own neighborhood? What makes it yours? What are the things that nobody knows about except for you guys because you live in this neighborhood? You're going to use these worksheets that are pinned to the bottom of the board as a way to walk you through what these hypotheticals might look like. So it might be a, a new health system that you'd like to see in your neighborhood. It might be a new economy of sorts, maybe a new way that uh, people work, new jobs. Could have to do with transportation or education. And then toward the end of the day, we're going to ask you guys to come up and, and start to use some of the materials that we've collected here to build the props, the set, that we might be able to use with our actors next week to live in these fictional worlds that allow us to see an alternative version of Queens where we could explore these new ideas and then come back to our neighborhoods and say, did I like it? Did it not work for me? How could I change it? How could I progress it? There's a Thai dessert and grocery store place that recently just closed. The Sugar, Sugar Club. Club. I was so <laughs> devastated by that. Apparently it was just because it's not making money, yeah. but it's like a loss of a cool community. Build more new school for students that the family stay in Queens, not moving out to Long Island. Yeah. Sometimes I live in Flushing, sometimes I try to They both are very not clean. Uh -huh. I can just say that they are not clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a uh, lot of garbage. Yeah. I wonder if you know we could explore just like nations within a nation within a nation. If there are you know some cards that feel like the positive sides of Queens, maybe you put them to one side. The negative, put them to one side. If there are things that you're not sure about, put them in the middle. It's like a seat, you sit down uh -huh. and the sound comes out, it's supposed yeah. to soothe your stress. Sound, some mm. kind of sound therapy. Yeah. So this might be a good time for you guys to shift gears from thinking about Queens today to starting to imagine Queens tomorrow. For the next part, we can look at everything, all, all of the things about Queens that you guys generated and maybe quickly write down a few opportunities we might see based on this. I think the food. A lot of yeah. comments about food. Food is food. definitely an opportunity. Don't change the food. <laughs> keep it spicy. <laughs> you're already tired from where you're coming back from or towards where you're going. What could we do to improve that commute that makes yeah. you kind of like ready to yeah. either go to sleep or go start your work? She was describing some chairs in Chinatown, or I'm not sure where, where it's folded, but you, it goes down. Like this on the wall, and sometimes if we don't sit just like that, then you sit, the chair so can come like, out. You know, maybe the chair is actually part of the tree. So maybe this is a tree. How did you see the print? And then like in here is like the chair. That. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. I don't think everyone have a technology background. But I think this is a project that that kind of make me to think about what 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 can I do with, with my ability, what I know, what are the possibility. And bringing people from different uh, upbringings or different backgrounds, it really makes 
uh, makes it for a good soup, you know? Yeah. Good ideas cook in, in that kind of broth. We came up with a public transportation solution that um, makes room for other activities while you're commuting, essentially. We created a cross-cultural lab. So different things to remind people of, of their homes, their native homes, and hopefully foster and advance harmony, acceptance, and intolerance, and celebrate diversity. The Queen's Museum is also the site of the World's Fairs in 39 and 64, which is to us a, a very interesting context. The futures that were proposed at the World's Fair were really coming from companies like GE and General Motors and IBM. These were these top-down visions of the future where they were telling Americans what the future should be like. At the end of the day, this top-down version of a future was enacted in many ways. And so this idea that we can rethink the space of the World's Fair and instead of using this top-down approach to proposing visions of the future, we allow for a, a grassroots, bottom-up version of the future and then to turn it into this testable space is really exciting for us. like the whole openness that yeah. you don't have to like disconnect, you know, right. from the world. Yeah. You just yeah. sit there, it's like deep breath, and then awesome. you go back into the world. Okay, cool. So yeah, well definitely we can explore a lot of those ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, you guys. I want to welcome a, a few new folks that you haven't met from last week. We have a, a group of actors who are going to be helping us to bring each of your ideas to life today. We're just going to go one by one and uh, talk a little bit about each of the zones and then bring that zone to life in a hypothetical reality and then break back into the real world and think about how it may have changed our view on that idea. But I'm going to hand it over to the actors to start us off and uh, they'll lead us through an exercise. Cool. So we don't know y'all. And so we thought we would start by just, you know, doing like a very simple thing where we kind of get in a circle and like um, just to kind of get ourselves in our bodies and out of our brains a little bit, kind of say our names and do a gesture. So everybody can kind of like get up yeah. in a circle. I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm Chris. <laughs> uh, Lucas. Hi, Lucas. Hi, I'm Gordon. Hi, I'm, I'm Gordon. Gordon. Way. And I'm Way. Kevin. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Oh, so um, we wanted to do one more game, and this is a continuation on using our bodies, but I thought it connected nicely to thinking about making objects and ideas. We're going to build a machine together, and we're going to do it in a very spontaneous way. Me. Me. Back. 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 Back.
There's a table of blue hats in the back. If you want to transform yourself from your everyday self to your hypothetical self, feel free to throw a hat on and jump into the scene if you want. Yeah, and you don't have to wear a hat, but if that helps you take yourself to another place, transform into someone or something, thing, that's a good way to do it. So we have our little talk time, and then we kind of do our enactment. So just to kind of like create a threshold for that, let's all just kind of clap together once. And then we'll clap on our way out, too, just to kind of like close that space. Yeah, you know? and it's just a symbol to say, hey, we're entering this kind of world. So, like, um, just kind of, everybody just kind of make eye contact, feel your feet on the ground, here we go. This is going to be a fun, weird thing we're going to do. Ready? So this is section number one, food bubble. So people can try foods from different countries, cultures, etc. And this is section number two, the scent gallery. Welcome everyone to our um, food bubble lab and cultural exchange restaurant. Does anybody like to have a seat? We need a party of two over here. I have a reservation for a party of two. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Anybody else? Do you have some uh, spicy Indian tumali? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh, Turmeric. Are you ready? Here it comes. Wow. Wow. If you want, you can share with the table. Yeah. We can bring sharing. So inside these, these smell bubbles is not just the smell of the mapu tofu or the cotton candy, but also the smell of the people, the activity, the city that this place was created. You might have people in a park in Queens somewhere, and they might be able to use the, the city's storytelling portal to bring someone from another part of Queens, or maybe another time zone, into their conversation, and make that conversation more rich and, and add more culture to that conversation. I am a fashion designer. So it's just a piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. we take a two yard, okay? And then you're going to so finish the circle of the sewing. Mm -hmm. Then you can wear the scarf any way you want. Okay, I like it this way. This way. That appetite to learn and to know and to discover is so profound in each of us. So any gateway that opens and expands that accordion and invites people in is a day well spent in the park. These tiles can detect what kind of trash is left on top and can kind of suck it underneath and start sorting it, kind of like a recycling uh, system would. We are the floor right now. I'm on, you're on paper patrol. I'm, I'm on, uh, I'm on food stuff patrol. Organic material. We use the material to recycle and see how these can be upcycled or recycled, and they would be sold at the shop. With more and more people moving to Queens. The train traffic would only get worse, and what if we tra transform that into a place of opportunity? And, well, we heard some different, like, different ideas we came up with. There's one segment that's like a co-op community garden. Well, why don't we harvest a few of these fiddlehead fern bean combination hybrids? Where like people can host classes and you can exercise. Um, Serrano tree is meant to be 
uh, an accessible natural space that you can spend five, 10 minutes. Um, there is sound therapy. So there would be natural sound and a guided breathing exercise. No, mom, I told you. No, I, I don't want to come beep, home. Beep, beep, hop, hop. Out of my way, I'm late for work. Oh, you know what, mom? I'm gonna have to call you back in like five minutes. I just need some time to myself, okay? All right, goodbye. Now entering the serenity. associated with the carbon moving from this tree to the others, carried by the underground mycelium. For the last three hours, we've been living in the future. How do you guys feel about this breaking away from reality for a couple hours on your Saturday and embodying fictions as a way to get into these, these possibilities, these hypotheticals? It just reminds me of a lot of child play. It's like when we were like little kids playing, imagine, like, let's imagine this. And I think it's very great exercise that when we grow up, we stop to imagining what could have happened and even for you to act it out. It's just amazing to kind of bring you into that thing. Hey, that could be possible. This is possible. Democratizing the process of thinking what the future might look like, it's, it's super important in Queens, especially, where um, there's so many cultures, there's so many uh, economical uh, systems in place. There are very particular government agencies and technology companies or just companies in general that are imagining what the future would look like. But if we give the power to the people and to challenge the assumptions of these technology companies, then we can start designing together, kind of like in a democratic way. That I really liked about this exercise. I feel like uh, what we did today and the last Saturday is like uh, we all together interviewing the future, interviewing the future of Kunz or the, or, and then the world. You know? So this is something we all collectively come together. One thing that I'm thinking about looking at all of these is like how, well, it seems like it's they're making use of existing systems or conditions, but also at the same time, it's like exploiting people, the vulnerability of people who are in these conditions. Like, oh, because we have long commutes, we're gonna make it comfortable so that you'll be able to endure. Instead of like changing the way you live, you yeah. had to change the way like everybody experienced the space. I think that's really valuable. So you were able to acknowledge that you were making concessions or accepting concessions to yeah. the system that's there. So part of this process for you may have been putting something out into this hypothetical test space, evaluating it and allowing these to be the, um, the canvas for adjusting the definition of your problem. I think that's really nice. What we really hope is that um, Maybe the yeah maybe some of these ideas can translate into your own um, fields. We'd love to hear how that works. You guys really really terrific. You all have all abstract ideas, and you are going to make it realistic, and maybe in future that will be really come up something true. So this is what I want to say.
Okay, good job. Thank you. You know, as the old song says, the future will be, and it's not ours to see. But at the same time, we, we are actants on the world around us. We can affect change. And if we take that mentality as we go into whatever scenario we're entering, we actually do have agency over the future. And so if people come away from this workshop feeling that uh, sense of agency, I think that's a, a really big step in the right direction.